Every month, although weather dependent, we either look up at the moon and curse it for drowning out all of those really cool and exceptional deep sky images we want to target and process, or you may look up at the moon in awe, realize how cool it actually is, so near yet so far type of scenario, and maybe wish that one day you could step on the moon yourself. Unfortunately, probably for 99% of us, we won't land or make it to the moon. But the next best thing is to image and understand the history of the lunar landings and their importance in science, exploration, and of course, astronomy. To that end, what I want to illustrate is based on an image that I took of the moon recently. I thought about learning more about it and what the significance is in relation to what I can see in to comparison to where man has landed and explored in the past. So to set the scene with my image, unfortunately not quite being able to capture the harvest moon myself due to weather, the nearest and best I managed was 98% illuminated one day just before the official full moon. However, with the exception of a Chinese mission, all landings have been made on the light side of the moon or the side that we observe from Earth, Luna 9. After a string of failures in the late 1950s and early 60s and a few successful impactor and flyby missions, Luna 9 became the first craft to achieve a soft landing on the moon on February the 3rd, 1966. The 218 pound Soviet lander used an airbag to survive the landing and then transmitted the first photos from the moon's surface to Earth. Severe one. Four months after Luna 9 landed on the moon, NASA's Severe 1 touched down on June 2nd, 1966. The spacecraft's primary objective was to test landing technologies for further future crewed missions, and it used retro rockets to land, slowing from nearly 6,000 miles per hour to just 3 miles per hour to come to rest on the lunar surface. Severe 3. Building off Severe 1, NASA's next successful lunar lander, Severe 3, touched down on April 20th, 1967. Severe 2 never made it after a mid-course correction, sending the lunar lander spinning out of control. Severe 3 continued to prepare for the crewed Apollo missions by using a surface sampling instrument that would reach out five feet from the lander and dig seven inches into the soil. In addition to transmitting thousands of images to Earth, Severe 3 determined that the lunar soil had a consistency similar to wet sand and it would be able to support the Apollo lunar module. Severe 5. The third NASA spacecraft to achieve a successful soft landing on the moon, Severe 5, conducted chemical analysis of the lunar soil to determine its composition for the first time. After landing on September the 11th, 1967, the spacecraft found that the lunar surface was like basaltic and conductive. Severe 6. Severe 6 was the first spacecraft to lift off the lunar surface after landing, flying about 10 feet into the air and landing again about 8 feet from its initial landing site. The craft was able to take pictures of its initial landing site, helping scientists confirm properties of the lunar soil. Severe 7. The last lander of NASA's Severe program, Severe 7, landed in the Lunar Highland region on January the 10th, 1968. The spacecraft repeated many of the experiments of its predecessors and found that highland crust on the moon contained less iron than samples on the Lunar Maria of plains of basaltic rock. Apollo 11. After the conclusion of the severe program and additional Apollo test flights, it was time to land humans on the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin touched down on the moon at the Sea of Tranquility on July the 20th, 1969, and they spent a total of 21 hours and 36 minutes on the lunar surface. During that time, the two astronauts ventured outside of the lunar module for about two and a half hours in their spacesuits, becoming the first two people to walk on another planetary body. About two hours before they blasted off the moon, Luna 15, which launched three days earlier before Apollo 11, fired its thrusters to come in for a landing. However, the Soviet craft crashed into a mountain near its intended landing site, 
about 540 miles from the Sea of Tranquility. Apollo 12. Four months after the first lunar landing, NASA astronauts flew back to the moon during Apollo 12. Pete Conrad and Alan Bean touched down on November the 19th, 1969, near the landing site of Severe 3. The two astronauts stayed on the lunar surface for nearly 32 hours this time, conducting two moonwalks totaling seven hours and 45 minutes. Apollo 13. Apollo 13 should have been the 11th of April, 1970, although you would have probably watched the film and heard that due to an oxygen tank explosion during the mission, Apollo 13 never made it to the moon and unfortunately became a mission of returning the crew back to the safety of Earth as opposed to landing on the moon. Lunar 16. The Soviet Union returned to the lunar surface with the unmanned Lunar 16 mission, which touched down on September the 20th, 1970. The spacecraft drilled out a sample core of more than 100 grams of lunar material and returned the sample safety to Earth, making Lunar 16 the first mission to conduct a fully robotic sample return. Lunar 17. Lunar 17, which landed on November the 17th, 1970, carried the first lunar rover to the moon. The rover operated for 322 days and traveled more than six miles across the surface of the moon, transmitting images and taking soil composition readings as it went. Apollo 14. It took more than a year for NASA to land astronauts back on the moon after Apollo 12, following the in-flight explosion of an oxygen tank that forced Apollo 13 to circle the moon without a landing and return to Earth. Apollo 14 touched down on February the 5th, 1971, and Alan Shepard and Ed Mitchell spent about nine and a half hours walking on the moon, collecting samples and conducting science experiments. And Shepard even hit a few golf balls in lunar gravity with a makeshift golf club. Apollo 15. Apollo 15, which touched down on July the 30th, 1971, was the first of the so-called J missions with a longer stay on the moon and greater emphasis on science experiments. Astronauts David Scott and James Irwin spent nearly 67 hours on the lunar surface, including 19 hours and eight minutes outside the lunar module in their spacesuits. They also deployed the Apollo Lunar roving vehicle for the first time, driving over 17 miles on the lunar surface to study the moon's geology and collect samples. Apollo 16. Apollo 16, the fourth moon landing, touched down in the lunar highlands on April 20th, 1972. Commander John Young and lunar module pilot Charles Duke spent 71 hours, nearly three full days, on the lunar surface, including 20 hours and 14 minutes outside the lunar module. The astronauts also drove 16.6 miles in the lunar roving vehicle, collecting samples and conducting research. The rocks they brought back, geologically older than the material collected in three of the other missions, helped disprove a theory that some lunar formations were volcanic in origin. Apollo 17. The last crewed mission to the moon touched down on December the 11th, 1972. Commander Eugene Cernan and lunar module pilot Harrison Schmidt, the first and only professional scientist to fly to the moon, spent longer on the surface of the moon than anyone before, a total of 75 hours. They also drove the furthest in the lunar rover of 22.21 miles. Lunar 24. Lunar 24 was the final mission of the lunar program, touching down on August the 18th, 1976. The lander was able to drill about 6.6 .6 feet into the lunar soil to obtain a sample and successfully launch the sample back to Earth. Lunar 4 remains the last Russian spacecraft to visit the moon. Chang'e 3, after Lunar 24, the world went 37 years without landing on the moon again. The next mission to touch down on the lunar surface was China's lander on December the 14th, 2013, along with a small rover. The first Chinese moon lander has been studying the lunar surface ever since and it discovered a new type of lunar rock back in December 2015. Chang'e 4. 
After the successful mission, China decided to use a backup lander and rover to attempt a landing on the far side of the moon, a feat that had never been accomplished. To land on the far side of the moon, China had to launch a communication relay satellite beyond the moon to communicate while the um, Chinese lunar module landed. On January the 3rd, 2019, Chang'e 4 became the first spacecraft to land on the far side of the moon. The lander and its rover are still operating today. Hopefully this video will inspire you to take a closer look at your own images that you have taken of the moon. And hopefully one day soon, humans will make a return to our ever-present neighbor.